Today's video is for the nice guys out there. We're going to talk about how to manage your dark feelings so that you can express them without hurting people. Having just watched the documentary on Netflix, American Murder, The Family Next Door, I identified the most extreme example of when a nice guy is unable to express his rage properly and he explodes. One of the main reasons I got started on my own journey to recover from nice guy syndrome is because I was starting to become afraid of my rage. I remember distinctly a moment where I was driving along in my car and for almost no reason at all I just exploded and I was punching the steering wheel and crying and I had no idea where all this rage was coming from. Another incident, a friend of mine was slightly annoying me and I just snapped and I punched him as hard as I could in the chest. I wasn't a violent guy, I didn't normally do stuff like this, but as I got older I just started to snap more often and it scared me. As many of you know I used to be a probation officer and I specialised in working with high risk violent and sexual offenders. What blew my mind the most was that the child sex offenders that I worked with often fit the profile of being a nice guy. In fact, they had been fine for a large period of their life, but all the bullying and all the suppressed emotion and shame finally made them snap and turn them into a sexual deviant. And I'd often see this in domestic violence as well. There are lots of different types of domestic violent offenders. Some are just violent guys who are nasty all the time. But a few are people who held it in and were never violent and were always nice for a long time. And then one day, they just snap. And this is often how murder happens. This is why I take nice guy syndrome so seriously. This isn't just a few luckless guys not being able to score with women because they're too polite. These are dangerous people if left unchecked for too long. If you're a nice guy, you know you've got that darkness inside you. And you need to learn how to manage that before somebody gets hurt. And it's not just about hurting other people. I've seen it a lot in the red pill community and also in Brojo, people who abuse drugs and alcohol and treat their bodies very badly. It's a form of self-harm. I used to do this a lot as well. Not only did I abuse alcohol and drugs, but I would bump into people when I was drunk in a nightclub. It's almost like I wanted to get my head kicked in. This was a form of self-harm. Essentially, it was kind of a depressed suicidality. And this is what happens when nice guys implode. When they're not brave enough to hurt someone else, so to speak, they end up hurting themselves. Before we go any further, make sure to grab yourself a copy of the online Nice Guy Recovery course from Brojo. It's completely free and it will help you figure out what type of nice guy you are so you know which way to move forward. So why does this happen? Why does a nice guy who's been in a marriage for 20 years suddenly snap and kill his wife and children? Why do so many of us have this darkness? Mostly it comes down to suppressed anger. See, nice guys are brought up to be easygoing, which means to be ashamed of all negative emotions. Anything from anger to disgust, confusion, even excitement. As all, we're all told to clamp down on those and suppress them as much as possible. The thing is, when you suppress an emotion, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays trapped in the body. Those chemicals still keep pumping. It's just that they've got no expression and no outlet. So they simmer and boil and mix together and turn into a toxic sludge that starts to warp your mind. And a lot of it's about a build up of resentment. Nice guys have a resentment for a lot of reasons. One of them is entitlement. We've been nice all our lives. We've been good little boys who did things right and follow the rules. Why aren't we getting our rewards? We were promised that life would be good if we were good. How come life's better for other people than it is for us? And the resentment builds from that entitlement to rewards. There's also a resentment build up from being pushed down all the time. And you see this a lot in nice guys with relationships. Because they have no spine, no backbone, because they don't stand up for themselves, the woman can't help but keep pushing to find that boundary and eventually she'll push and crush the guy down to the ground. Now he feels that he's being bullied and that this is really bad treatment, while she feels insecure and unsafe because her man won't stand up. And the both of them continue this dynamic and the guy can't take the pressure anymore. There's also a great sense of unfairness and inequality. Nice guys look out at the other men out there and see them succeeding in all the ways they wish that they were succeeding. 
and they see them as being not as nice as me and you know much more mean than me and not deserving of all these rewards and it just feels like you've been targeted for unfair treatment by the universe a big part of the resentment buildup is what's called a covert contract nice guys expect you to live a certain way and treat them a certain way but they don't tell you this openly they keep it all up in here and assume that you should just somehow know this and then when you fail to live by these unspoken rules, you will be punished with sulking and bitterness and even some form of punishment that directly hurts you. There is, of course, the sexual frustration. Nice guys are some of the unluckiest in love. Why? Because they're unassertive and they don't take risks and they don't lead or initiate. So they are going to always get a lot less sex than other guys who are bolder and willing to take a risk. But nice guys think, oh, I've been nice, I deserve sex to come to me, and it's not, so this is unfair. And that compounds with the actual physical frustration buildup of not having sexual release. There's also going to be a great buildup of cortisol through bad coping mechanisms. If you're using a lot of alcohol and drugs, or you're watching porn a lot, or you're binging on Netflix, or whatever else it is you do to try and feel good and get relief from all that resentment, what you're doing is actually creating a neurochemical imbalance in your body that makes you more bitter, more agitated, more irritable, and more likely to snap. Then there is the concept of self-rejection. Nice guys, because they don't want to get rejected, they always imagine how it's going to go rather than actually going through with it. And they imagine people rejecting them all the time. They never actually hear the word no, they just imagine that that person yawning or that person's already got a boyfriend or whatever, all of this means no. And so they have a lifetime memory of being rejected constantly, when actually they've only been rejected probably a couple of times, the rest of it was just imagined. But in their reality, they've been mistreated and rejected all their life and it's so unfair. What this leads to is what's known as covert aggression, sometimes mistaken for passive aggression. Now passive aggression is where you sit back and do nothing and you're sitting there fuming. Covert aggression, you're actually actively punishing people but in a very discreet beat around the bush kind of way. Sulking, gaslighting, invalidation, trying to create codependency. All of these are some of the many forms of manipulation that nice guys end up indulging in to punish people and to try and release some of that resentment. By the way, comment below if any of these are resonating with you or if you can think of some more that you think are pretty common to nice guys. And if you like the video so far, please give it a like, subscribe and help us uh, get the channel out there. So how do we fix this? How do we go from suppressed, covert, aggressive nice guy who's just one straw on the camel's back away from snapping and doing something horrible to being a confident, well-expressed guy of integrity who's never going to be at risk to other people because, like Jordan Peterson says, he understands his dark side and he controls it. It's all about two things. Responsibility for your feelings and honest expression. These are the cures to your dark side. If you can take responsibility for yourself and your life and express the way you feel constantly, you'll never have to worry about this shit building up. Open contracts. Whatever you expect of someone, tell them. Make sure that you never have an unspoken expectation in your head. And if you do, if you don't have the courage to tell them, then recognize that and realize that they have no obligation to obey that expectation. If you haven't said it, they don't have to do it. Fight all your battles, no matter how small. That whole don't rock the boat, be easy going thing, fuck that. Every little thing that bothers you, speak up about it. You don't have to win these battles. This isn't an argument. This isn't a debate or a competition. This is just you getting the poison out. Every time something makes you feel a negative emotion, before you do that split second reaction and start suppressing it, just let it out. One way to think about this is to reveal all your disses. Dislike, disapproval, disappointment, disgust. Anytime you're feeling any of those disses, let it out. You don't have to follow it up, you don't have to win the battle, but just get it out so that it doesn't build. And take responsibility for your life. Now this is going to sound a bit fucking dark, but here's the truth. Your entire life you've always had the option of suicide. Now I don't condone that. 
But what it means is if you're alive today, then you're choosing to live because you could choose to die. And you have to understand that if you choose to live, then you choose to play the game. You choose to play the game of life, which means you choose your relationships, you choose your job, you choose the boss you have, you choose the friends. And however people treat you, you've chosen to be in that situation. So don't blame them for treating you badly. Take responsibility for choosing to be in the situation and for choosing to be alive. Which means it's your job to do something about it if people are treating you badly. It's your job to confront them. It's your job to set boundaries. It's not their job to treat you well. They didn't sign up for that. You signed up for being in their presence, so it's your job to manage your reaction to them. One of the things you can do is check out my course, Overcoming Your Fear of Rejection Permanently. This will give you a lot of strategies to help letting things out and help facing your fears so that you don't have that build up and that fear of missing out. Switch your focus from trying to make people like you and trying to make them happy to try and impress yourself with integrity. Let people not like you. You'll be fine. Let them be upset. Let them be uncomfortable. Let them say no to you. Let that be an inevitable result of you living with integrity. You saying what you mean, going for what you want, expressing how you feel and so on. This approach won't get you all the kind of happy results that you're used to, but have those ever really been that good? I mean, is your life really that good? Making people happy? Do you enjoy it? Is it still comfortable? Or are you fucking miserable and maybe it's time to try things a different way? Finally, let go of the myth of fairness. No, the universe is not fair. Sometimes the shittiest people get all the rewards and the good people get punished. And sometimes it's just random and chaotic. And sometimes it's fear. And everything in between. None of that's under your control. You didn't write the rules for this game. You just got to play it. Which means you have to be the fair one to others. Rather than hoping that it comes to you. Be honest with people, be respectful with people, take responsibility for yourself, your feelings, your actions. That way you create your own fairness in the universe rather than hoping that someone else will create it for you. Thank you for watching. Please come and join us at Brojo. It's totally free to join our community. Plenty of nice guys in there who are trying to recover and they'll relate to you quite easily. Thank you so much for watching again. I'll see you next time. Cheers.